In this program, we are going to check whether the given number is an Armstrong number or not. Let us start by understanding what is an Armstrong number. If a given number is three digit long, so we just need to add cube of all the digits and the number that we get after addition. If that number is same as the given number, then we call that number as an Armstrong number. Let us take another example. Let's say if user has entered 100, so cube of each digit is one. Hence, 100 is not an Armstrong number. Now let us understand how we can achieve this programmatically. So to solve this problem, the first step is from the given number, we need to find this value. How we can do that? We can apply a modulus operator with 10. So we'll get three. So in the second step, we need to multiply three to find cube. So we'll get 27 as a number. Then this 27, we need to add in our common variable that's the sum. So previous value of sum will get added into 27 and we'll get 27 if sum was initialized to zero. If sum is not initialized to zero, then it will hold some garbage value and we'll get some incorrect value over here. So that is why we are required to initialize sum to zero. In the third step, we need to get away with this three. So we'll divide 153 by 10. So we get 15. So further operations can be done on one and five. So these three steps we need to perform in a loop while our given number is greater than zero. Okay. So let us check our programs. I'm using these variables. Temp is basically to check at the end of the program, whether our final addition, which will be stored into sum is equal to equal to our original number n. Now, because n will become zero at the end of the loop, hence we are storing that value into temporary variable so that we can have simple condition as sum equal to equal to temp. Okay, next variable is remainder, which will be storing our remainders and sum is a variable which will be storing addition of each cube and n is our number which we are using to accept value from user. So here I'm asking user to enter his number. Then we are storing n into temp. Then here is our while loop. Our condition is while n is greater than zero. Assuming user has entered, let's say 153. So 153 is greater than zero. So our first step is to divide 153 using modulus operator with 10. So we'll get remainder as three. Then we are doing multiplication and addition as sum is initialized to zero over here. So we are adding zero plus 27 over here. So our sum variable will become 27. In the next statement, we are getting away with three. So we'll have only 15. So at the end of this statement, n equal to n divided by 10, we will have n as 15. Why? Because 153 divided by 10 will give us 15. Now, once this statement is completed, our n is 15 now. So compiler will check whether 15 is greater than zero or not. So that is true. So compiler will go inside of our while loop and then we'll find new remainder as five because 15 modulus 10 will give us five. So in the next statement, we are adding 27, which was my previous value plus five multiplied by five multiplied by five. So this will give me 152. In the next statement, we are getting away with five. So 15 divided by 10 will give me only one. So again, in the subsequent while condition, our condition will be one greater than zero, which is a true condition. So my remainder will be given as one modulus 10, which will be one. So in the next statement, we are adding 152 plus one, which will give me 153. In the last statement, we are dividing one by 10, which will give me zero that value we are storing into n. So my n will become zero. So once compiler goes back at the top to check whether n is greater than zero. So n is now zero. So condition is zero greater than zero, which is a false condition. So compiler will skip this whole part. And in the next statement, we are checking whether temp, which was holding 153, my original variables value equal to equal to sum, which has become now 153, which is a true condition. So temp is equal to equal to sum which is true in this case. So the compiler will print it is an Armstrong number. If let's say user has entered let's say 100, then sum would be one, which is a false condition. So compiler will print this is not a prime number. I hope you understand this program. It is little complex to understand. After this video, we are going to start with for loop, which are very commonly used. So before we directly jump into for loops, I strongly advise you to go through while loop properly first, because it will be easier for you to compare while with for and understand benefits of using for instead of while sometimes. So let us catch up in the next module.